Hey guys, Alyssa here. So I just started recording this video and then I got a super exciting text that my cousin, who I love, her water just broke. So I just got overwhelmed and excited and now I need to start re-recording. So without further ado, here is my basal body timing video, which I know a couple of you were excited about and I'm really excited about because I'm a big dork about it. So here we go. Okay. So this video is going to just be the basics of basal body temping. I'm not going to get into too much detail about charting or about chart interpretation because that becomes kind of like a giant heaping mountain of confusion because there are a lot of people who read way too much into charting. I seriously am just going to keep saying this. Keep it simple. It, it does not have to be super complicated. So today we're just going to focus on the basics of basal body temping and how you can use it to chart your menstrual cycle and pinpoint ovulation, which if you are trying to conceive like I am is really important because knowing when you ovulate is like step one to getting pregnant. <laughs> so first of all, what do you need in order to basal body temp? The first thing you're going to need is whoop, a thermometer. This is one from Target that I got uh, over a year ago. I got it a year and a half ago and it's still working great. I haven't had to change a battery or anything. I don't even know if you can change a battery. Anyways, it was really inexpensive. I, it was on Cartwheel and I think I had a coupon. It was like five bucks and it was, it's worked great for me. It actually comes in a little plastic case, which is nice because you can keep it cleaner. I am gross and don't keep it in its plastic case and I keep it right next to my bed. I do sanitize it every once in a while because it goes in and out of my mouth every day and I think that's probably more information than you need to know. But anyways, so you need a thermometer and you also need a way to keep track of your temperature. There are two main types of charting. There's charting using an app and then there's paper charting. If you want examples of paper charting, I'm going to send you to a website called Appleseed Fertility and that is linked below and probably somewhere around my head right now. And she has amazing temping resources if you're getting started in charting resources. And she also has paper charts that you can download and print and use them to write in your temperatures and all the other information she talks about on her website. And those are great for paper charting. I do not paper chart. I've paper charted a couple of cycles so I can bring them to my doctor or whatever. But I actually find that Fertility Friend, which is a charting app, works great for me and I will link their website below and probably somewhere around my head and I actually I actually have it on my phone as well. Fertility Friend I also like because it gives you some feedback and does the like work part of basal body temping for you which is really nice because like I said it can get kind of complicated. So those are two things you need. You need a thermometer and you need a way to chart. Oh, It is an absolute filming nightmare today. <laughs> I was just really on a roll and then got a phone call from card member services about my credit card. Anyways, I don't know where I left off. I think I left off talking about Fertility Friend. This may be really jumbled and I'm sorry. Basically, I like Fertility Friend because it does the work for you and makes it simpler for me, which is good. I guess the next thing I should talk about is probably how do you take your temperature? Because I know that's the part that's hardest to get in the habit of doing. Figuring out how to interpret your chart, that's one whole hurdle, but actually getting your temperature and having it be reliable is I think the most difficult thing. Basically what you want to do is you want to have your thermometer right next to you when you in bed. So like right on your end table, right there so you can't miss it first thing in the morning. Because you want to take your temperature first thing when you wake up after a good amount of sleep, so like three to five hours, with before you do anything else. You can't eat or talk or sit up or pee or anything before. And you want to make sure you're taking it at around the same time every morning. So it is a little bit of a hurdle because you need to make sure it's your habit. I will tell you though that by now I've been doing it for about a year, year and a half, and I don't even think about it. I just roll over and grab my thermometer every morning. It's totally part of my routine. I don't even notice it. Even when we're traveling, I it's still just so instinctual that when I first open my eyes, I immediately reach for my thermometer. So just give yourself a month or two of getting in the habit. That's really and truly, that's the absolute hardest thing is just getting into the habit. So it is important that you kind of follow those rules about making sure you've slept a few hours, making sure you're doing it at the same time every day, and making sure you don't get up before you're temping because changing any of those three things will affect what your temperature is. So say you get up every morning around 8 o'clock, that's perfect. You want to just make sure that even on the weekends, you're getting up within about a half an hour every day. 
it doesn't necessarily matter what time that is it could be six it could be nine just make sure that you're doing it consistently because if you sleep later every day your temperature will naturally rise or lower depending on your body based on how late you've been sleeping how warm it is all that kind of stuff you also want to make sure that you've gotten a good amount of sleep because it's during sleep that our bodies sort of reset and our temperature will drop to a core temperature and that's the temperature you're interested in while you're up and walking around during the day or while you're you know getting falling asleep at night your temperature will fluctuate based on a lot of different factors we don't care about that we just care about what your core body temperature is at base level zero so you have your supplies you know how to take your temperature it's starting to become habit now what are you looking for basically what your core body temperature does through your menstrual cycle is it changes based on which hormones are the highest and lowest and which hormones are doing what in your body so generally speaking from when you have your period so cycle day one until you ovulate your temperature is going to range a little bit lower for me it usually ranges between 97 degrees fahrenheit and 97.4 degrees fahrenheit for that first part of my cycle it can it can fluctuate within there but it doesn't usually go too much higher or too much lower after you ovulate not before but after you ovulate your temperature will raise and it'll generally stay about half a degree Fahrenheit higher than it did the first part of your cycle. So basically what you're looking for is this. Like that. It doesn't matter the specific temperatures within the pattern. What you're looking for is that shift. That is ovulation. And remember, your temperature goes up after you ovulate. So if you're trying to time baby dancing you want to do it while your temperature is low because once it spikes once it gets higher you have already ovulated that's important <laughs> so basically you keep track of your temperature each day fertility friend does it for you and I will insert a picture of a fertility friend chart probably one of mine here On that chart, you should have been able to see a clear pattern where the temperatures were lower, there was ovulation, and then they were higher. That's all you're looking for. Don't freak out and just get hung up on individual days, and remember that your temperature can fluctuate based on other stuff. But just remember that those variations are okay. So if you're sick and you have a fever for a couple days, just make sure you note that so you can kind of think to yourself, okay, well I probably didn't ovulate because it was, you know, way too early or way too late but I just need to know that I did have a fever those days, so that's why my temperature's goofy. I think that's all the basic stuff you need to know about basal body temping. You need a thermometer, you need to remember how, or you need to chart, you need to take your temperature consistently, you need to make sure your thermometer is somewhere where you're gonna use it, and you need to look for that big overall pattern and not get hung up on individual days. I think that that's all. If you have any other questions, specifics about basal body temping, at least getting started, Please let me know and I will try to make a video with a more detailed chart, chart interpretation soon so you guys can see what it looks like once you kind of have a chart, how you can figure out all the other complicated stuff. Alright, I love you guys and oh, I'm going to try this today. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and like it so that I know and then um, what else am I supposed to say on these little things? Oh, if you want to see when I upload videos, which I do randomly, you should subscribe, and I think that's everything. Okay, that felt really weird. I don't know how people say that every single day. <laughs> Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Baby dust. Bye!